Joining me now, former presidential candidate Ralph Nader, author of Only the Super Rich Can Save Us, Jane Hampshire, founder of FireDogLake.com, Rabbi Michael Lerner, editor of Tikkun, and Congressman Alan Grayson. Last but not least, Congressman Alan Grayson, and I want us all to pause here for a point of personal privilege for me. It is, it is an honor that Alan Grayson would grace this show again tonight after I was inexcusably, inexcusably rude to him in this panel discussion last night. Uh, he accepted my apology graciously uh, today on the phone, and he is uh, gracious enough to rejoin us tonight. So don't be surprised, everybody, if Alan Grayson gets some extra time here tonight. Uh, Congressman Grayson, let's start with you. What do you say to Shelley Berkeley, that lone voice who stood up in the caucus and said, in effect, this seems like the best we can do and we absolutely can't allow those rates uh, to go back up uh, on people on January 1st, the, the people below the top yeah. tax bracket, which is what she's worried about. Uh, and she has the feeling that President Obama did her best and we don't really have much time left to do much to change this. Well, it's very simple. The president was elected on the platform of yes, we can, not no, we can't. We're going to have to find a way to do better because that's what America expects of us and that's what America deserves. We elected President Obama to be our commander in chief of the people in this country with a conscience, to go into battle for us and to win for us, not to be the capitulator in chief and negotiate the terms of our surrender. Congressman, I think it's clear that the president is saying that if this framework fails, uh, then we could, as Larry Summers has said, uh, go into a double dip recession. But your point last night is if this framework fails, there is still some time on the legislative clock to try another framework. What do you think the prospects might be, having been in all these caucus meetings in the, in the House uh, and knowing what you know, being on, on scene on the Hill, what do you think the prospects are for significant enough change in the, uh, uh, the bill here that it can get through the House, not necessarily with your support, but with enough Democratic support uh, that it could also then get through the Senate with 60 votes? Well, it's going to have to be substantial changes. What, what the president has done is to tout an agreement. Well, you can always reach an agreement when you give up, uh, particularly when you're willing to give up a lot. And that's not what the American people need or deserve. There's going to have to be substantial change to get to an agreement. But this deadline that we've been talking about is an artificial deadline. Uh, we, we, we change taxes retroactively all the time. Uh, the president can direct the IRS to keep withholding rates exactly where they are so that nobody is hit by higher rates as of January 1st. And we need to work together to do this in some normal, professional manner. It's interesting that the particular clause that you and I discussed on the air last night is one that hasn't even been reduced to writing yet. This clause that would give out $150 billion to corporations, which, by the way, would be enough to hire 5 million Americans, reduce the unemployment rate by 3%, and give them all paychecks of $30,000 a year. When you're handing out $150 billion, you at least need to see the work. You need to see what the document says. They keep telling us all the time, read the bill, read the bill. There's no bill to read. There's been no hearings held. There's been no markups. There's been no analysis by the, the, the Joint Tax Committee. They just simply throw out this phrase, they take it or leave it. You know, this is legislative malpractice. Not the first time. To go time ahead and spend a trillion dollars this way, just because the president reached some kind of agreement with his arch nemesis, Mitch McConnell, and left the rest of us all out. As, as Ralph can tell you, it's not the first time uh, tax bills have been legislated like this at the last minute. Uh, Congressman Grayson, your name appears on the list of possible candidates that Michael Lerner included in his op-ed piece in the Washington Post about a, a Democratic threat to Barack Obama in the primaries. Are you prepared to make an announcement now about whether you will consider and in indeed plunge into a presidential race challenging Barack Obama in the Democratic presidential primaries. You know, usually when I see Grayson for president online, I just assume it's one of my five children who put that out there. But, but I think we need to focus on a different point here, uh, a related point. The, the question is not so much, is Obama going to be challenged by someone in the primary? The question is, how could Obama possibly reignite his base? We just went through an election with the worst result for the Democratic Party in the past 116 years. And the reason is all across the country, except for the West Coast and New England, Democrats didn't vote. 
The Democratic vote went off a cliff. We all saw it. We all lived through it. In many places, the Democratic vote dropped by half in two years, in some places by 60 or 70 percent. How is Barack Obama going to bring out his base? The Republicans do all they can to bring out their base. You never hear the Republicans saying, well, we have to reach out to the middle. We have to get the independent vote, the way President Obama seems to say from time to time, because they understand that the independent vote isn't there anymore. The center cannot hold. There is no there there. So what President Obama has to learn to do is to be the president that we voted for to be that shining knight in armor. That's what he has to do. He has to be a fighter. And it's not too late. He can still do it. And then it won't matter if he's challenged by someone in the primary, because Democrats will feel proud to vote for him the same way that, that people felt in 2008. I was proud to vote for Barack Obama in 2008. I want to feel that way again. And that's what he has to concentrate on. That's what he has to learn. And it's not too late to do it. And that's going to have to be the last word on this subject tonight.